Okay, uh, so this week we will talk about how we can design uh, the relationship database. Uh, again, so we will focus on the, the basics of designing relational database, uh, especially that how we can design the relations among the different tables. Uh, so designing re database is a, is a huge topic, so that involves like security, authorization, etc. Uh, but for in this class, we only focus on designing the tables and that's how we can relate a different tables together. So last week we talking about how we can create a single table and we introduced the different constraints and also what is the primary key and our foreign key. And also we tried to create uh, one table. But this week we are talk about how we can create uh, multiple tables and how we can relate those multiple tables together. And that is kind of the key feature of the relational database. <clears throat> OK, uh, so first, let's talk about the concept that what is considered redundant and also what is considered a duplicate. And so those are very important concepts in relational database. And if you remember that in relational database, we want to try to reduce the redundancy. OK, we try to reduce the redundancy because that is kind of the waste of our storage. So for duplicated data, so that means that, OK, so we can see that a column may have two or more identical rows or identical values. However, you cannot delete that without losing information. So in another way that if you delete those identical values, you will lose information. So in that case, those are called duplicated data, and you should not delete those duplicated data. Um, and also, what is redundant data? So if a column has more or two identical values, but if you delete one of those uh, values, you still can keep the information. So in this case, it is called redundant. And for redundant data, we want to try to reduce those redundancy. Okay, so those are based two basic concepts. Uh, let's see one example here. So here we can see we, uh, for the teacher name column, so we have two same values. So suppose that the two teachers that have the same value, same name. And those are identical values but those are considered duplicate data. So because if you delete, for example, if you delete this one, you will not know the name of T3. OK, because T1 and T3 have, have the same name. So that is considered duplicate data, duplicate data, and you cannot delete those duplicate values. Uh, what is considered redundant? OK, so here we see we also have a teacher name. And they have the identical values. And in this case, those are considered redundant because we know that those are both the names name of T1. OK, so if we delete this one, we still will know that, OK, the name of T1 will be this because we still have this row. OK, so in that case, that is called redundant okay so for duplicate data you cannot delete the duplicate records because in that case it you will lose information but for redundant you can delete redundant records safely without losing information and it is also recommended that um, you should eliminate those redundant data so that you can keep your uh, data, database more efficient. OK, uh, so the way that we limit redundant data is called split table. OK, uh, so you will see that a lot in relational database. So for example, here uh, we have the redundant data. So the way we are going to do that is we split the table. OK. Uh, so from the left side, we have a cost table where cost ID is a primary key. 
And on the right side, we have a teacher table. OK, and where the primary key will be the teacher ID. OK, and on the cost table, we don't have any redundant records. And on the teacher table, we have duplicate records, but those are not redundant. OK, so on the right. So on both tables, now we only have duplicated records and we don't have redundant records. OK, so that's great. Well, you may look like, OK, so you have actually have more records. OK, and that is because on the teacher table, we have more teachers. So we have T2 and T3, which was not um, on the original table. So actually, we have fewer records. And on this table, uh, we have primary key for that is course ID and then also we have primary key that is teacher ID. So this will be the foreign key. So if you remember that on the course table, the teacher ID will be the foreign key that refers to the primary key on the teacher table. OK, so on the course table, we have primary key and also we have foreign key. All right, uh, so next normalization rules uh, so the, those are the normalization rules so normally there are five normalization rules um, so when we design when we're talking about designing relational database so the best practice is to follow those five normalization rules Okay, uh, so I'll give you a few seconds to see if you can understand those normalization rules. All right, um, let's see one example of that. So those are very, very abstract um, normalization rules. So it is very hard to understand. Uh, so let's see one example first. So let's see an example that are violating the first normalization rule. Okay. So those are all examples that are violating the normalization rules. So why those are not the best practice? Okay. So here we see we have students and actually we are talking about students. So students are the primary case. We have their advisor information and also advisor's office. And then we want to record so what classes are each student taking uh, in this semester. So because students may take multiple classes. So the first one is that we put each class as a separate column. OK, and that is not good. Because so what if student one have uh, four classes and student two has uh, takes three classes. OK, or what if let's say student one taking so many classes and then the table will be oh, very, very wide. OK, so that is not the best practice. And then we someone may say, OK, so what if we put all the classes in one cell? OK, uh, so we can either use a comma uh, to separate those classes or we can use a slash to separate those classes. And that is also not the best practice uh, because remember we said that the cells are the basic unit. So um, the cells are the basic unit. So within a, within the cell, you should not have internal structure. OK, within a cell, you should not have an internal structure. So for example, if we want to take, OK, if we want to know that the, the class that uh, the student one is taking, it will retain a string that contains three uh, classes and separate by comma. And then I need to do additional job to split those strings based on comma. OK, so that is not the best practice. And for example, if I want to update uh, the students, let's see if we want to insert a new class record, or if I want to delete one class that students is taking, then I need to do extra time 
and to you know split the classes and also compare each single class to our target etc etc so so you should not have those internal structures within the cell so the cell is a basic unit and you should not have those internal structures